Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I've decided to do something a little bit seasonal and I'm going to make some Halloween decorations for the doll's house or miniature scene. Now I've actually been working this week on my 148th scale doll's house and it's slow going so I decided that I'd do something a little bit more fun and share it with you. I'm going to be using, as I normally do, scraps of cardstock, um, food box, card, beads, that sort of thing. And hopefully we can make something a little bit fun. Now, the first decoration we're going to make today is a school topiary. This is basically a pot with a pile of skulls in it. And this is something that I've seen a lot on Halloween prop. Um, sites and um, inspiration sites and with my favourite little skull beads I thought it would be the ideal thing to replicate in miniature. Now for this I'm going to need some skull beads obviously, some cardstock, um, this is cereal box card and a cocktail stick. I'm also going to be using some air drying clay and possibly a little moss or something similar to um, fill in around the edges. Now I'm going to start with the pot. Obviously it's going to be the bottom of the piece. And what I've done is I've done um, my stacking up of circles. In this case it is three five eighths of an inch circles punched out of an old cereal box. And I've also got a piece here which is half an inch in um, width which is going to be the height of the pot once it's um, all put together. So I've glued these together so they're nice and secure and ready to go and I'm going to now glue this around there a bit neater than it's stuck at the moment but I'm going to do it like that. Now what I've done with my little pot is I've given it a quick coat of black paint just to start the process off and once that had dried off I've put some air dry clay in to both weight it down and to hold in place the um, cocktail stick which is going to hold my skulls in place. Now I've used um, DAS um, modelling clay which is a I believe paper based air drying clay. It's all right, it's not brilliant, but it does for what I need it to do. I'll just move that out of the way. Now, what I've done with that is I took a cocktail stick and I cut it down to the size that I wanted. I put, I stacked my skulls up on it, took into account that, and gate left a little bit more so that I've got some room for manoeuvre. Um, this is just so that I'm not relying on glue alone to hold my skulls together. I have put some black paint onto the air dry clay and also a rough coat onto the cocktail stick just in case anything um, sticks out. And what I've also got is I've got some moss. I've got a lovely big bag of moss but of course at the moment I cannot find it. So, I found this little one and it will do the trick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a good amount of glue around the base of the um, cocktail stick on the top of the um, air dry clay. And now I am simply going to add chunks of this into place on the glue. Now, I do want some bits hanging off 
because it adds to that sort of messiness even though there is a good chunk of me that is going no that looks awful tidy it up so just push that down into the glue and I've got the first layer now I need my skulls. Now one of these fits onto the cocktail sticks better than the others. I'm just using my glue cocktail stick to see if I can figure out which one. And I think it's him. No, it isn't. had these all on the cocktail stick earlier on. Got some spares. Always useful to have spares. But anyway, when I figure out which order they go in or go on on, like so, I will put the first of my skulls into place. And now all three skulls are in place. All that I'm going to do is just add a bit more of the moss onto the top. Let's bring in a little bit more glue. This has the advantage of covering up the um, holders in the beads and just pulls the entire piece together. So there it is, my skull topiary. So my next decoration is pumpkins or even jack-o'-lanterns out of wooden beads. Now what I've done is I've taken these wooden beads and I've used a little bit of my air dried clay to give them a stem. This has also had the added bonus of um, filling the hole in. The next stage is going to be to give them a coat of orange paint. Now I'm hoping that even though they're a bit shiny, because they're fairly dark, the orange is going to cover better because I don't really want them to be bright orange because pumpkins aren't bright orange. I just want them to have that sort of lovely autumnal look to them. The pumpkin beads have had two coats of orange paint and as you can see they've got a sort of very dark kind of worn orange look to them. Now this happens to be um, a look that I like. I think that in this case I'm going to go for this sort of almost on the verge of rotting pumpkins rather than um, nice fresh bright orange ones. I've also given their little um, stems a coat of some dark brown paint. Now this is my um, bit of a bodge for painting them which was just, especially with the big one. Stick a cotton swab inside and then use a clothes peg or clothes pin um, to hold it in place. Now, the two smaller ones I'm just going to leave as pumpkins, but this one I think I'm going to use my Posca pen, my black Posca pen, um, and I'm going to give it a jack-o'-lantern face. And here we have him, my little wood bead jack-o'-lantern. Fond of him, and he's about, his face is about as good as any that I've ever carved, so you'll do. This decoration can be adapted for any occasion, or even just because you feel like it. Now what I've done is I've taken some black cardstock, and I have cut out a load of triangles. Now, I'm quite fortunate in that I have got a die cutter and I happen to have a very small bunting die. 
which is what I've used for these. But you can do it literally by taking a strip of cardstock, drawing out the triangles and cutting them out. Simple as. And then you just decorate it as appropriately. I've used a white Posca pen, which is a acrylic paint pen, to write Happy Halloween across it. And then I've left some blank ones because they are going to go between and at the end of the words. To turn it into bunting, I'm just going to use a length of ordinary sewing thread. It's the right scale for 1 12th and um, doesn't look out of place. Now what I've done is I've used um, a embossing tool, a very fine one, and a ruler. And I've put a line across the top of each piece. Now this is on the front because you always score the side that you want to stretch the paper. And I'm just going to fold it over backwards, like so. Once I'm happy with the fold, I'm going to take a small amount of glue on my cocktail stick and I'm going to put it along the inside of that fold. Then picking up my thread, I'm going to put the thread into the top part of the fold and squeeze it together on the outsides. And then, as you can see, I start to get my bunting. I have glued all the pieces into place and um, that's, do that's it done. A simple piece of Halloween bunting ready to be hung up onto my doll's house. Easy as that. This is another decoration that I've seen a lot in real life. All different varieties from really, really fancy, um, quite amazing pieces of work to pen store, dollar store versions. And this is going to be one of those um, fake signposts. Now what I've done is I've printed out some um, suitably Halloween-y words onto um, coloured backgrounds. I just did that by using the um, table function in Word. Nothing more complicated than that. And found a font that I think sort of suits the Halloween ambiance. I've got a wooden um, circle for the base and then for the actual signpost I've got a um, craft stick um, coffee stirrer type. Uh, actually yeah it's a coffee stirrer I think more than a craft stick that have been put to one side because it's actually not very straight. Now that would be difficult if I was making something where I wanted it to line up with another but in this case the fact that it looks a bit warped will go with the Halloween aesthetic. What I've also done is I've cut the top of it with my craft knife so that it looks really rough and ready and looks like it's been broken off or something. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to um, decide how big I want my signs and cut them down with the knife and a ruler and then I'm going to um, see how tall I actually need that on before I glue it onto the base. So I've cut my signs out. Um, I just went for fairly simple, a bit of a arrow on the bottom one and I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off at about that height so it's not too high because obviously I don't want this to look like a um, real street sign I just want it to look like one of these decorative pieces. I have given all the pieces of my um, spooky signpost a um, coat of black paint now, what I didn't say when I showed you these in the first place was that I'd stuck the printed out pieces onto a double layer of cereal box card. This was just to give it a bit more depth and a bit more um, substance. And I am literally just gluing these pieces 
onto the um, main bit of the signpost. And so there we have the main body of my signpost. Now I'm going to stick this onto the base and then um, see if it needs anything else. I have glued the sign to the base using a combination of wood glue and ot glue. The ot glue will hold it in place while the wood glue sets. Um, I could have done it without the hot glue, but it would have meant me having to sit here for quite some time holding the sign into place until it um, took. Obviously, because I couldn't clamp this, the shape of it. So I decided that was my best option. It does also mean that I've made some really cool um, hot glue spider's webs in the process, but that's an added bonus. To cover up the hot glue, I've um, turned to the moss since it was already on the table and I've just stuck some of that in place just to give it a kind of rustic effect and also to tie it in with the um, skull topiary. My final make for today wasn't actually um, in my original plan but while I was looking for a die to cut the bunting I found my bat die and considering the fact that I decided that I was going to show off these pieces by decorating my actual doll's house I realized that these would be absolutely perfect so I'm going to show you how to make some flying bats. I die cut my bats out of the same black cardstock that I used for the bunting which just happens to be the black cardstock that I have in as standard but you could cut them in another colour and paint them and obviously if you don't have a die and a die cutter you can find the shape on the internet and you can cut them out. I mean obviously if you're one of those people who's got an electronic die cutter that's even better because you can cut them in no time at all the same with the bunting but this is just what I came up with. Now the other thing I'm going to need is for each one a piece of jewellery wire. Now I've got different lengths because I don't want all the bats to be the same size and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the wire, bend over the end of the wire with a 90 degree bend. Now I can do that with my fingers. I do not need pliers or anything for this. Now I am then going to go and dip the end of that into my glue which as usual is on one of my scraps of cardstock and all I'm going to do is I'm going to dip that onto there so that there's plenty of glue on there and I'm going to get a bat I'm doing this sort of sideways on so hopefully you can see and I am going to glue the wire to the bat but this is how I make my flowers and in the same way that I dry my flowers I'm going to dry my bats by sticking them into there and there stuck into my eraser is my little flight of bats by putting them onto wire they still have a fair amount of movement and that will look quite good when I put them in place on the doll's house and you'll be seeing that in just a moment and here we have the house decorated for Halloween bats hanging flying off the railings, bunting, pumpkins, skulls, including a couple of extra skulls that I just attached to some cardstock circles and topped with moss. And of course, my signpost. Considering I had no plans to decorate the doll's house for this season, I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. And I may still make a few things yet. I may add, a wreath for the front door or maybe not it all depends anyway I hope you like this video and will join us next time for more miniature makes